Welcome, my fellow indie fans! I'm Kevin Chirka, the Indiana Jones nerd. The Indiana Jones movies have seen Indy come up against all kinds of adversaries in his adventures. Unlike the James Bond films, the indie films don't exactly have a standard archetype for its baddies. Of course, everyone thinks of the Nazis when they think of Indiana Jones villains, but there are thuggies, communists, and gangsters as well. Today, we're going to be seeing how they all rank up against each other as we count down the top 10 Indiana Jones villains. If you like content like this, then I hope you'll hit me up with a subscribe so I can get this channel going. And with that, let's begin. Number 10, Walter Donovan. Didn't I warn you not to trust anybody, Dr. Jones? After portraying villains in both the James Bond and Star Wars movies, Julian Glover brought his talent for sinister roles to Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. Like Glover's character in Fear Eyes Only, Walter Donovan first appears to be an ally before being revealed as a surprise villain. His crimes, along with neglecting his guests, include selling his country and his soul and shooting Sean Connery in the stomach. Man, this guy really hates James Bond. But this Nazi stooge received one of the best comeuppins in the franchise, aging rapidly after a drink from the wrong grill. He chose poorly. Number 9, Colonel Dr. Arena Spalko. Kate Blanchett's Soviet scientist character is a fierce, heartless woman who embodies a state which has rejected God. Obsessed with using the mind as a weapon, she develops psychic powers and seeks the treasure of Akator to supplant thoughts into the minds of her nation's enemies. An objective not unlike the role of Soviet propaganda. Spalko is also a strong sword fighter and carries a rapier as her signature weapon. In the end, her lust for knowledge becomes her undoing as she bursts into flames after an overdose of alien knowledge. <laughs> Number 8, Colonel Dovchenko. The brutal threat of Antonin Dovchenko looms over Indy for the whole of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. The two of them have epic battles both at Area 51 and on the road to Akator. Actor Igor Jajenkin brings an intimidating presence and great physicality to the role, but also shines in comedic moments. Dovchenko is one of the toughest foes Indy has ever come up against, and is rewarded by being the dinner guest of a nest of Siafu ants. <laughs> Number seven, Colonel Vogel. And this is how we say goodbye in Germany, Dr. Jones. Oh. Michael Byrne is terrifically intense in the role of Vogel. There's a great rivalry between the Colonel and Jones throughout the film. And while he does get the drop on the Joneses several times, seeing Vogel bested by Indy in various ways is always satisfying. The chase scene near the end of that film is one of the best in the series where Indy on horseback takes on a tank commanded by Vogel, culminating in a great fight on top of the tank. And the sight of a Nazi colonel on his tank falling off a cliff is very Indiana Jones. Number 6, The German Mechanic. We've taken a look at some tough foes already. Now let's talk about the toughest. The German mechanic only appears in one scene, but he's one of the most iconic villains in the franchise. This guy is just pure brute strength, and even Indy is totally outmatched. Every single punch by the mechanic sends Indy to the ground, whereas his own punches don't even phase the German. But some quick thinking and a little bit of luck propels Indy to victory. Number five, Elsa Schneider. But you should have listened to your father. When Indy arrives in Venice in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, he's met by a beautiful Austrian woman, Dr. Elsa Schneider. 
Schneider becomes the film's romantic partner for Indy, and it turns out that taste in woman runs in the family. But soon, Indy learns that Elsa was secretly working with the Nazis. She remains conflicted about her allegiances, but no villain is to go unpunished, and her greed becomes her demise. The two-faced role was well played by Alice in Duty, who had also played a Bond henchwoman in A View to a Kill. Number four, Lao Shea. A wealthy Chinese gangster, Lao Shea was the owner of businesses like Club Obi-Wan, the Shanghai nightclub where Willie Scott worked as a performer, Indy meets Lao here at the beginning of Temple of Doom in an arranged trade of Narhachi's remains for the Peacock's Eye Diamond. But, of course, Lao Shea had intentions of getting Narhachi for free and poisoned Jones. Eventually, Indy and company escaped on a flight out of Shanghai, but on an airline owned by Lao Shea, who had his pilots ditch Jones over the Himalayas. Lao Shea and his sons are the only significant villains to be left unpunished for their sins. Mostly. Number three, Arnold Tote. Wait, 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 I, I can be reasonable. That time is past. You don't need that. Uh, uh, wait. Uh, I'll tell you everything. Uh, yes, I know you will. Ronald Lacey's portrayal of this Gestapo agent a few words is one of the most menacing threats of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Though not a physical threat, Tote's sick devotion to the Nazi way make him a hugely intimidating character. His costume design and facial expressions make him one of the most memorable looking characters in the films, and only more so when his hand is branded by the staff of Raw Headpiece. His face-melting death is one of the very best in the series and set the bar for all villain deaths to follow. Number two. <laughs> Molaron. Welcome. <laughs> Another terrific costume design and outstanding performance here by Amrish Puri combined brilliantly to bring this villain to life. The head honcho of Temple of Doom is surely the most evil of them all, kidnapping and enslaving children to dig in his mines. He also offers human sacrifices to Kali, where he demonstrates his supernatural power of ripping a man's beating heart from his chest. He forces adult prisoners to drink the blood of the Kali, converting them into mindless devil worshippers. He too is burned by a scolding artifact before plummeting to his doom. <laughs> Number one, Reggie the Snake. Oh, that's just my pet snake, Reggie! I hate snakes, Shock! I hate them! Okay, just kidding. Number one, Rene Belloc. Dr. Jones, again we see there is nothing you can possess which I cannot take away. This slimy rival archaeologist is the best Indiana Jones villain of them all. He is Jones' equal, seeing himself as a shadowy reflection of Indy. No depravity is too low for him as he lies, cheats, and even swallows a fly. But worst of all, he aligns himself with the Nazis, despite being a Frenchman himself. The character was supposed to appear in the unmade third season of the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, but Belloc actor Paul Freeman did appear in the show in another role. In the end, Belloc opens the arc and leaves his eyes wide open. So, that's my list of the top 10 Indiana Jones villains. Have I chosen wisely? What are your rankings? 
Let me know down in the comments, and I hope you'll give me a like and subscribe so I can get this channel going. Subscribing really does help a lot. I thank you so much, and wish you all fortune and glory. Bye-bye now.